Welcome back to my top 100 games so far. We're back with part two. Numbers 90 through 81. What's in store this time? Well, just hold on a second and we'll be there. So, first up, number 90, Camel Up. Yes, it was nominated and even won the Spiel des Jahres back in 2014, I believe. Good game. Very good game, actually. Uh, racing game, but more of a betting game. Because you don't actually control the camels. And that's kind of fun. A little unintuitive for people. Everybody starts grabbing colors and they're like, Oh, I want to be the orange camel. I want to be the yellow camel. And it's like, no, 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 no. Hold on. Um, the, the thing with Camel Up that always gets me, it feels like you just don't have enough control. And and that's okay. Uh, just like anything can happen. And you can have crazy things where green can hop on blue and then blue can move and hop on white and then white can move and hop on top of orange. And so that green camel that was in fifth is now all of a sudden in second. And that's this great come from behind victory and you know somebody was betting on green the whole time and they're like ha 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 now I've got you exactly where I wanted you it's like where else are you going to see that so camel up really cool betting game cool rest cool racing elements and uh, a, a worthwhile game if you haven't checked it out somebody around probably has it so get in a game and uh, and Check it out for yourself. Number 89 is Agricola. And this is my proof that I do like long games game. So Agricola is that kind of... I call it a heavy euro. Uh, very strategic, very tactical. Make your best move when you can. Worker placement, build up the house, build up the farm, build up everything you need to build and probably still fall short because you have to have a little bit of everything in order to not lose points and that's a a reasonable mechanic i will say i do not like the expansion where you have to continue to heat your house otherwise people go cold and you lose more points because it's bad enough that you have to feed your people all the time, though it makes thematic sense. It's just too much to have to heat them to. It's like too many steps, not enough actions. I want to be able to do stuff in the game. I don't want to do work all the time. So, I like Agricola. I think there's a ton there. You just got to be careful about too much work and not enough fun. Number 88, First and Goal. Yes, the fun football game. Now, I will say that this is a game that still has a ton of potential for me because there's a lot of team packs still to explore. But what I have played is super interesting. I love what's in the game in terms of outthinking your opponent. Are they going to go for the pass? Are they going to go for the run? Are they going to go for the long pass? What defense do I want to play? Do I want to gamble that they're doing one thing? Or do I want to try to play it safe and give them some die or dice, but not too many? Do I want to say, yeah, I'm okay with them getting a medium die. I'm just not going to give up the big play no matter what they do. Risk-reward. That's what this game is. And... I like the theme. It works out for me. So, combination of things. Game style I like. Theme I like. That's my first and goal on the list here at 88. 87 Time Stories. Now, I have only played the Marcy case. No, I will not do spoilers. I, the reason I skipped the first one is because I watched the full playthrough on the Dice Tower because I thought, hey, I'm not going to play Time Stories. 
then somebody else in my group got it and they wanted me to play and I said I remember too much of it it wouldn't be fair for me to know stuff and then I came in with Marcy case and we just haven't had time to get future cases played but total intention to and we will be doing Prophecy of Dragon and the Egyptian one that I don't remember the name of at this point and I'm looking forward to that so Time Stories cool system interesting mechanics I can nitpick here and there but I like that you get some things temporarily some things are permanent changes and that the game does streamline the more times you go through any particular case so good game all right number 86 castles of mad king ludwig all right this is the spiritual successor to suburbia which is higher on my list but the only reason this is lower is because i haven't played it as much as suburbia i may end up liking it more but i gotta favor what i know what i do like about this game is that every round the order of titles changes and players get to set the prices of things and if you're not the one setting it you get to and if you're not the one setting it you have to pay the person who set it but if you do set it you have to pay the bank so there's a real balance there in terms of setting tiles that people want but not at super cheap prices and then you want to leave yourself with something you want, but not too high because you want to not pay a ton of money. So there's a fine line there. you got to pay real attention to the goals. And if you don't, you end up getting a lot of points during the game, not many at the end, and that can hurt you a lot. I may be speaking from personal experience. Yeah. Anyways, fun game. Want to play it more. Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Number 85, something completely different, Tiki Topple. Yeah, if you've spent any time with me, you will have heard or played Tiki Topple. And this is a kid's game. It's game right game. It is meant to be silly fun. There are nine Tikis on the board. You move them up down, toast them, and it's random. It's screwy, random, dumb luck about what happens, and you know what? I don't care. I don't care if I win or lose. I play this game to have fun, and that's my only reason for doing it. I say silly things like, wiki wiki must go on top, or woohoo go down the drain, like, you just do those things because it's a fun game, and that's what matters. So, Tiki Topple, fun, that's the reason it's here, and that's all I'm going to say. All right, number 84, Terror in Meeple City, or as people want to call it, Rampage. Now, this, this is the dexterity game that is super fun. Yes, you are flicking a disc into buildings and getting meeples, or blowing off of your monster, because it's like this and it's... But, yeah, it, it's the only game that I've seen played personally. I know Crokinole has this same rule. The one cheek rule. Keep one of your bun cheeks on a chair at all times. Except when you're getting up and moving. But whenever you're making a game move, you must have one cheek on a chair. It's a fun rule. <laughs> and it makes total sense. So, I, the game is silly fun again, and uh, this is just the silly fun segment. I like it. Alright, 83. We're going the opposite of silly fun. Rattus. This is a game about spreading the Black Plague in Europe. You are, well, 
your cubes. You're trying to survive the Black Plague, but you also spend time moving the Black Plague, trying to kill other cubes. Uh, still kind of fun. Uh, you're, you're taking powers, you're uh, manipulating the map, you do a bunch of stuff. It, it's a push-your-luck game in some ways. It's also area control. I like variable powers. Uh, it's a game I need to play more of. It, this game used to kind of hover in the 20s, 30s for me. Now it's way down because I don't play it. But I, I, I still like it. It's got expansions. Uh, one expansion is super necessary, Pied Piper, and it's not readily available, and that makes me sad because the variety it adds is so important to this game. So, White Goblin Games, if you're still in business and you happen to see this, please reprint Pied Piper expansion for this. People need it. Please. <laughs> All right, that's my PSA for the for the episode. All right, 82. The other side of my I like long games. Keyflower. Yes. Again, not super long, but super in-depth. Uh, really, really in-depth game. And when I first played it, I was kind of lost in the rules explanation. I'm like, uh, just, just get me started. I'll, I'll pick it up. And I did. I, I managed to come in like second or third out of five people the first time I played it. And, and I thought that was an accomplishment. I'm like, okay, I, I can live with this. Um, second time I played it, somehow I won. So there, there's something there. Um, my group is probably not as cutthroat as many expert Keyflower players out there. Um, but, you know, that's okay. Um, Keyflower is a lot of fun. There's a lot of deception in terms of what your ultimate goal is. You need to be willing to take tiles from other people that they really want and uh, block people from doing things that they want to do. And knowing when to do that and when not to do that is a big key. So, Keyflower, a lot of fun. Takes a while to get into, but once you know it, is a game that's pretty good. And the last game on this list is kind of a conglomeration of games. It's the Upper Deck Legendary System. Now, I have only played Marvel Legendary, which I really like, and Predator, which is a lot tougher. But I still kind of like um, the reason this fell down, and this used to kind of hover in that 20-30 range, is it got a little too bloated, and I wasn't able to keep up. I, I wasn't buying any of the stuff I was playing with friends, but it was like every time I played, it's, oh, yeah, we've got this new expansion. And, and that's okay. I mean, it keeps the game fresh, but... It's like, you know, at some point, I want to be able to play with stuff I already know. And I just want to learn more about the game. So, I, that's not a huge problem. Because, hey, it's heroes and there's tons out there. But, um, I, I do like the Marvel system. And then I think they took the Predator system and they made it just really tough. And, uh, and that's not a terrible thing. It's just, uh, it's different. So, uh, the Legendary System, good system, very innovative. I know they're coming out with a Firefly system sometime later this year, and I am super excited about that. I think I will actually use that to be my buy-in to the Legendary System, because I love the Firefly theme. So, uh, we'll go with that, and uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for part two of these videos. Thank you guys for watching. Two down. Eight more to go, uh, and until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care, guys.